Hello, welcome to GeoAI tutorial number nine. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do ship detection using deep learning and uh, GeoAI. So first I want to show you the result. Uh, this is a satellite imagery covering uh, Dubai. And these are the ship detection results. So if you hover your mouse, you can see the geometry properties, the size, the length, the orientation, something like that about each object. And you can also um, have a confidence so basically how accurate it is, uh, how certain it is that the model detect the ships. Upper right corner here, you can see the, uh, the color bar showing you the competence. You might notice there are also some uh, missing um, objects here. It's normal. You might need to fine tune the model to get better result. But this is just couple lines of code and only takes you a minute or two to run this one on any imagery, any high resolution area or drone imagery for detecting the uh, the ships so i can zoom out here you can see this we have a, a couple hundred ships parking here uh, in this uh, location okay so let's uh, get into it first you need to go to the geo ai website to download the noble example the link is in the video description below so once you're on the home page click the examples and scroll down to find a uh, ship detection so from here, you can either run this one using Google Collab or you can download this one to a computer. If you click the download button, it should download to a computer or you can right click and then open this one on uh, Google Collab. So make sure you turn on the runtime type to uh, T4 GPU uh, because we're using deep learning to do the uh, inferencing. So you need GPU to much fast, run much faster. Then you can uncomment this line to run the, uh, so the, the example. I've already have this one on my local computer. So I'm going to basically show you step by step how are we going to do that. Uh, it's super easy. You can click this one here to show you the uh, detailed step here. First, uh, you need to import the library. I already installed the package. So just import the library and uh, once uh, shift uh, enter on your keyboard so be able to import the library. And then let me zoom in a little bit here. The next step is to download some sample data. I have the sample imagery covering Dubai hosting on Hugging Face. So we're going to just download the imagery. I already have that, so it's going to download very quickly. After that, you can call the view raster function to view the uh, the satellite imagery on an interactive map. It should be pretty quick. And so behind the scene, you'll be able to see this is the uh, uh, imagery covering Dubai and with um, Open stream map is the best map. Up right here, you can turn the layer on and off. You can zoom in to see more details. So this is um, centimeter level imagery. If you want to see the basic information, you can create a new code block. And then I'm just going to type geo um, AI to get raster info, or maybe print raster info. So you can see the information. I'm going to say raster pass because we have downloaded it on our local computer. Just run it, you should see all the basic information about this particular imagery. So it's a GeoTIF, uh, how many pixels, how many spectral band, and this uh, integer, unsigned integer eight. What we want to see, or uh, you also have a preview here, you can see the minimum, um, the maximum, or something like that. The resolution is 0.29, so roughly 30, meter, uh, 30 centimeter resolution, just a pretty high resolution. And once we have this, now we can start doing the uh, ship detection. So the first step is need to initialize the model. You just run it and it's going to download the model from uh, Hugging Face. If it already exists, then it's going to use the one on local computer. So you can specify uh, the model path. If you already have your own ship detection model, you can load it here. And then you can also specify the model, the custom model to doing the inferencing. So just one line of code. Now we have this uh, model. Next, we need to um, generate the mask. So the first step is to uh, specify the output where you want to save the output. Then you can call the generate mask function. So this one here, let me run it just to let it run. It should be just a couple of seconds. Under the hood is going to subdivide the set of imagery into smaller tiles, overlapping tiles. So the overlap here is 25%. So that means for each chip size, for example, we are using 256 by 256. So near the border is going to be have 25% uh, overlap. And then the base size four basically means it's feeding four tiles into the model all at once. And you can also set the confidence level. This one, I changed it to 0.9 because there are a lot of false positive detection. 
So you might need to increase this number to reduce the uh, false positive. You can also set a mass threshold. Um, all the threshold range from zero to one. So the higher the value, um, the more selective, but you might have some missing results, missing objects. If you have a much slower number, sometimes the net adjacent object are, me, are being merged as a larger one. So in that way, you get a large object. Sometimes it's, it's not what you want. You want the um, board at the boundary to be pretty clear and they separate from the net adjacent object. Then you might need to increase this mass threshold to 0 0.7, 0 0.8. So in that way, you have a smaller number uh, object, but there's high quality result. But you're going to miss some of the uh, object detection. Okay, so it's done. And you can see here we have 205 uh, bases. So that means it's subdivided into uh, smaller tiles. And each base has four images. So it's roughly it's almost 1,000 um, uh, 1, image tiles to fit in, into the model. Then we can run this vectorized mask. So this function is you need is a raster mask that we generated from the previous step and we specify the output. You can set the competence level um, to 0.8. You can also specify the minimum and the maximum size. So it depends on the object that you are interested in. If you know kind of a roughly the size of the object. So this is 100 pixels. Keep in mind it's 30 meter resolution. So 30 meter by 30 meter you want to end up with basically 0.3 by uh, multiple by 0.3 is 0.09 um, square meters, one and multiply by 100. So you get the, 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 the size. You can also set the maximum. If you don't want, don't know the exact number yet, you can just keep this as default. So for example, the maximum object size is none. That means we don't know how big the object will be. Then later, once we get the result, we can also filter it out uh, later. Because we're going to get a vector data, so it's pretty easy for us to filter the result. Once we have the initial result, then we can just call the view vector interactive function to visualize the result. So let me show you here the uh, final, uh, the initial result. So we're going to use the confidence as uh, the symbology to give the color. You can look at the upper right corner here so because we set the confidence level uh, threshold earlier when we do the generator mass to 0.9. So it means only those very high uh, accurate uh, mass are being uh, kept. So here, if you have your mouse, you'll be able to see the, the color here. Let me zoom in a little bit. So these are all the shapes. Again, you will see some missing here because we set a very high threshold, but you have a set very low threshold, you also end up with a lot more. You may need to play with the threshold to see which one give you the best result. Then you can do the um, uh, um, basically filtering. Half of your mouse, you should be see confidence and the class. The class is all one because you only have one class. Um, and so if you take a look, it's pretty good. Uh, some of those are larger ones being most together. Again, because I think the reason because some of the object, they join together, you, you can generate the mass. So you can actually load the mass anywhere, but we're just right now loading the final uh, vector data that we want. And also you're going to see a lot of this outside the area. There's quite a lot. So I don't know why right now the model is not performing super well um, on some other locations and it detects some of the other false positive object on lane. So this is not ideal. And there are a couple of ways you can do the filtering. You can, if the object have very distinctive, for example, this one is pretty long. It's less likely to be an object or if they're super big, for example, the so wide, then you can set a threshold because we already have the zero data frame. So next, this add the geometry properties. We can call this function, add geometry properties, and then pass in the output from the vectorized mass. And just within less than one second, you have all kind of attribute. So I'm going to show you here, we have geometry confidence. So this and the class are from the uh, previous output. Now we add this uh, abundance of, of attributes ranging from area, perimeter, uh, bounding boxes, major and uh, minor axis length, orientation, elongation. So this can be very useful if some of the um, outliers or the false positive objects that are very big, very small, or it's very long, very narrow, then we can use this uh, attributes to filter it out. Once you have this, now this uh, view the, the result again, it's going to be the, the it looks the same, the geometry is the same, but now if you have your mouse, you should have this, all this attribute, and it's very nice. So you can filter it out. For example, here, 
Hover my mouse, you can see the area is 429 square meters. It's probably too big. A ship usually doesn't have this, it's not this big. You probably don't want to use the size because they're also some of the detection they um, most together, for example, in these two, they are kind of most together, it's also 400. So area is, unless it's super big, like thousands, then you can fit in it out. But right now it's not because you also have some uh, object that have been detected correctly, but it's most together. So you might need to be very careful. Also, the other map is on, looks like square. So this one is probably too wide. <laughs> and um, I think it's the uh, eccentricity, for example, or the um what what the elongation is only 1.17 so usually a ship will be at least two to one three to one something like that so the elongation may be one criteria you can use to filter out the uh force de uh, positive detected um ships but since uh let me show you an, a better way because because all these ships are concentrated in this area anything outside is not i mean likely to be ships so we can actually just simply have an area of interest to is um, the filtering criteria and then you can remove other things. So let me show you how to do that. First, let's uh, create a map. So we're going to view the raster, view the original imagery. So make sure you're going to use the backend iPad leaflet because the previous backend is using folium. So it's not interactive. You cannot get the um, draw the object. You cannot get the object out uh, programmatically. So in this way right now we can so again this is just the original imagery and because you know this is the one that's going to be needed so what we can do here is to use this um, drawing tool here to draw a polygon and then you can use this one to filter intersect with the result and then we get all the ships uh it's kind of a cheating but i mean you have too many and other post positive detected object is going to confuse it might take you a while to figure out the base criteria, but right now this is probably the easiest way. So I'm just going to come here and then you can start drawing the rectangle. So for example here, oops, you might need to zoom in a little bit. For example, uh, it, it can be just uh, roughly estimated. So it doesn't have to be super accurate. So here, and maybe take just a couple seconds. Okay. And somewhere here. And lastly, once you're done, just click double click again. It should form a closed loop. So now we have this area. So we know if it's your idea is not, I quickly calculate how many ships, right? It only takes a couple seconds to get the result. Now, once you draw this one, we can use it to do the filtering. So the next core block here is to grab the ROI from the one that we draw on the map. If you didn't draw anything, it's going to use this default one. It's very much similar. If you want to know like what, what it is, you can just type m.user.ris. It should be to, oops, uh, user underscore ris. So it's going to show you uh, all the coordinates. So basically, the geojson dictionary that we just draw on the map. And so these are all the coordinates. Once you have this, you can um, convert this one to a geodata frame. So I'm going to run this one uh aoi is not defined let me see here oh we just uh use it so we need to run this code block so it's defining the aoi once you have this we can now filter the result between the intersections so the gdf is the detection result that we got earlier from the vectorized mass and then we're going to intersect with the aoi we take geometry so basically just the polygon that we just do after that let's see how many um ships that we have so earlier we have, let me see how many here. GDF, we can run here, length, okay, GDF. So we have 440 ships detected from the model. After doing the filtering, let's see how many are left. Okay, so I'm gonna run this. Um, oops, what is happening? Something is weird. Okay, so here, then you'll be after this one the filter so length 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 oh you did, cannot see it length and then gdf filter so 333 so basically we down from 444 to 333 
Um, now should be uh, the results should be much more uh, reasonable. Again, we're going to use the view interactive. And now this zoom out. You see, all the ships outside the area are gone now. So we only have ships uh, accurately detected within the area of interest. If you have a mouse, you're going to still get uh, keep those attributes. So it's pretty cool. And there are a couple missing one here. Um, maybe I think maybe 5% of the ships they're not being detected the only issue is that some of those like if they really close together they might be most as one treated as one single object there might be some issue uh, so let me zoom uh, navigate through here oh there's also a tiny one here so this one we might need to filter using maybe the elongation so the elongation is only 1.12 you can filter it out because I like I said most of the ships is um the elongation should be two to one or three so it should be a little bit elongated um this one we can probably just take it out because we only have one other than that i think the result looks pretty decent so in that way you don't have to do the manual calculation i would say maybe five percent of those are not being detected again you can fine tune the result fine tune the parameters to see um how can you remove them or or maybe re uh, decrease the mass threshold and also the confidence threshold so in that way we get more within this area uh, there's also another tiny one here this one is also wrong so this maybe can filter using the area the smaller area so once you filter it out then you should have um, better result okay so this is all for this tutorial i uh, hope you find it useful in the next couple video i want to show you detect some other object for example solar panel um, trees and other types of uh, objects from satellite and uh, aerial imagery. Okay, that's all for this video. See you in the next one.